So hopefully you can hear me. We're filming here today during Storm Babbitt. So if you saw the last episode, you'll have seen that we dug out this area ready for our workshop. We're building a six meter by four meter workshop. And we're gonna take you along for the whole process, step by step here on the channel. Today, I'm gonna to show you guys how you can build a concrete pad that'll be strong enough for anything like workshops, garden rooms, sheds, pretty much all of your garden building needs. It's horrible weather, it's gonna chuck it down all day. But I've got no choice because of time frames. I've got the type one and the blind and sand turning up today and we're starting to build our concrete pad. Time scales dictate it's gotta be done today during Storm Babbitt. And just to make things even better, We've got a flat tire now. When it rains, it pours. What we're gonna do first is shut her off. Now what that means is we're gonna form a frame and I'll show you how to do all of that so that we can build our concrete pad and contain all of that type one, blind and sand and concrete within the frame. Obviously, if we didn't build a frame, it would all just spread out and we'd get absolutely nowhere. So we're gonna be using these scaffolding deals, which are 220 mil. And conveniently, that's the perfect size for our concrete pad. Basically, what we're gonna do is build a frame with them we'll be putting stakes in the ground leveling these off and that'll give us the perfect edge to run our tamper along when the concrete pour arrives so because it's absolutely chucking it down I think I'll probably just show you the process as we go along so first we just start to lay a few boards out just to give us a starting point we want to square off the back fence because that fence is square to the house We'll then be able to square the sides off the back board so we know that the pad will be square to the house. We're now just levelling up the first of our boards to give us a bit of a datum point to work from. So this deal is staked in for now just so that it doesn't go anywhere. We know it's perfectly level and that gives us a datum point or a point to work off. So as long as we level the adjoining boards as they go, we should get everything perfectly level. And we also need to make sure that we get the corners square. There's a couple of ways you can do that. You can just use a big square like this or you can use a 345 rule. Now to do 345, what you do, we'll measure three foot along our first board make a mark there at three foot. You then measure four foot on your joining board and the distance between the two marks should be five foot, so you'll know it's square. But double check that with your square just to be sure. We can now start to work in that direction, leveling the boards and squaring them up as we go. getting harder and we have got half of the shuttering done it's horrible working in this to be honest um, I don't recommend it so don't do that at home because the pads gonna be six meters long we need our deals to run six meters long so we'll just put some joiners in to extend them um, and yeah carry on moving in that direction So we're getting there now, we're just putting the end bit in, um, obviously squaring it all up as we go. What we're gonna do is just grab our tape and take a corner to corner measurement each side. If the measurement's the same, we'll know that the concrete pad is gonna be perfectly square. So we'll take a corner to corner measurement this side first, 7220, 7220, bang on. We know that's perfectly square now. So our stakes will go just on the outside. We'll space them evenly along the length, making sure they're not proud of the top edge because when we tamper it, if they're proud of the top edge, of course, we won't get a nice flat finish on the uh, concrete. Then I'll just bang a couple of screws in just to hold them in place. And that's it, the shuttering is done. That gives us a nice sturdy frame. Yeah, as you can see, it's not let up all day. So I'm gonna go and dry out and I'll catch up with you guys in the morning when we start to construct the pad. Day two and at last, 
the rain has stopped. So as you can see, the Type 1 MOT and the soft sand has arrived. And what we're going to do today is construct the sub base ready for our concrete to be poured. Luckily, we've got the help of our old friend, the mini dumper. We used this last time when we excavated for the workshop. If you haven't seen that video, make sure you check it out. So that'll make it a little bit easier to move all of this all the way to the back of the garden. It's still gonna be a fairly tough old day um, to move this type one because it's so dense and it's really hard to get a shovel into. Luckily I've got a few helpers and we should still get it all around there by the time the dumper has to go back. So the plan for the sub base is to have 100 mil of type one MOT to give us a nice solid base underneath the concrete. On top of the 100 mil of type one, we're then gonna put 20 mil of blinding sand, which is just building sand or soft sand that sits on top of the type one and that stops the DPM from getting any punctures or anything like that especially when you're walking on it if you didn't put any blind and sand down and you just put your DPM on top of your type one because there's lots of sharp stones and things like that in the type one you could end up puncturing it so you need to make sure you put the blinding sand down before you lay the DPM the purpose of the DPM is to stop moisture coming up from the ground into your concrete pad and of course then up into your workshop so all of those elements are very important and they play their own individual part within the sub base. So I think what we'll do now is get some ramps up so that we can get the dumper over the shuttering and then we'll start to bring some of the five tons of type one round. If you need to calculate how much type one you need or blind and sand there are calculators online that can help you. It's going to be a tough old day. The graft begins. Hit the music! too soon. This is the thing with these jobs, you can't choose the weather unfortunately when you've hired dumpers and deliveries and things like that. It's just one of them things. We've got a crack on. to make things even better we've got a flat tire now so it looks like we're going to be doing it the hard way wheelbarrow for now when it rains it pours So we've got some of the type one in, we've got a rough level. So we'll get the compactor on there, see where the level's at, and then we can fill any of the low spots. So I've got this little Hyundai compactor. It's a really great little compactor, actually. I've used it a couple of times. It's perfect for this job. If you guys are in the market for a compactor, I'll leave a link in the description. Go and check one out. I'll just give this an initial run over with a compactor to start with. What I'm doing now is just going around and filling any of the low spots and then I'll just continue working in that direction, compacting it and filling the low spots as I go. Bit of a relief, we have got enough took some of the highs off, filled some of the lows, and it's perfect. We've now got 120 mil up to the finish level. That's 20 mil of the blind and sand and 100 mil of concrete. So I'll just run the compactor over this one last time, make sure it's all nice and compact. The type one binds together nicely and gives us the perfect sub base to lay our blinding sand on top. So let's haul the sand round and get it on top of this.
So we've got 20 mil of compacted blinding sand. That now leaves us the DPM to go on top with the rebar and spacers to go in there as well before the concrete gets poured. So we've had to bodge up this tarpaulin over the whole thing. Now it's not ideal, but it's set to rain all day tomorrow morning and that is when the concrete is turning up and we're gonna be pouring the concrete in here. Normally I'd recommend that if you guys are doing this job and it's set to rain like this, try and postpone it if you can. I can't because I've got loads of jobs coming up in the next couple of weeks around other people's houses, media walls to build, all kinds of things and I've got no other spare time to do my own stuff so this has got to happen today tomorrow it's annoying but we're just gonna to have to cover it up keep the rain off it if you get rain in your concrete you could affect the mix and you don't want that to happen once it goes hard it doesn't matter so the next bit of the concrete pad we're gonna lay the DPM and we're gonna put the mesh in on top with spacers now you have to put mesh or rebar in concrete because that is what gives it the strength without the mesh really the concrete is subject to cracking in the future how much of this I actually get on film I don't really know it's gonna be difficult with the weather especially tomorrow so um, I'll do my best for you guys so my glorious assistants here are doing all the work while I talk to the camera which they're really happy about when you're doing your DPM get it tight into the edges of the shuttering because obviously you don't want any air bubbles or gaps to form along the edge of the um, the DPM so the DPM's all there we're now getting the mesh in laying it in with a 50 mil gap from the edge because if we go too close to the edges you could risk puncturing the DPM. DPM is overlapping the shutter and all the way around so we can fold up the walls. But I'll show you a bit more about that and why we do that in future episodes. So we'll get this laid, or they'll get it laid, and then I will go around and put some spacers in. So you can see we're just tying all the spacers on now with the wire. Um, that just sits the rebar up 50 mil. Where the rebar sheets overlap, we tie those together as well to make them one. You need to have a spacer at least two per square meter, tie them all on and that'll give us the strength once the concrete is poured. And there comes the rain. We can buy a bit of luck on this build so far, unfortunately. So in about 10 minutes, we've got 2.8 cubic meters of C30 concrete being delivered. The rush is gonna be on. I've got a few friends helping. All my little worker bees are gonna be back and forth with wheelbarrows. And we've got 45 minutes because it's mixed on site, so that gives us a little bit of extra time. Normally, you'd probably have about 30 minutes to get this done, but we've got a bit extra, which you might need in this weather. So we've got lots of people helping with barrows, and I'm gonna set the camera going, a few different angles, and you can sit back and watch whilst we fill this thing up with concrete. Before the cement lorry turns up, if you are enjoying the video, make sure you hit like and hit subscribe because you don't want to miss out on future videos. And go and check out the DIY Club. That's my new membership program where you guys can help me to support big projects like this for the price of a cup of coffee and you get a load of perks for it as well. <laughs> So, concrete's in. Um, we went a little bit over the 45 minutes. We've got it somewhere where we want it now. Obviously, you can't mess around too much because you don't get a lot of time. What we're doing now is just tamping the concrete down. And then what you'll see is the guys are gonna saw it and they'll drag off any high spots. And that sawing action just gives us that nice smooth finish and it takes off any of the high spots. And then what we do is we just come in with a shovel and fill any of the low spots as well. And we will end up with a nice smooth concrete pad. I don't know what they're moaning about. <laughs> Bloody easy. It's the next day and typically the sun's out. I'll be honest, that was a grim few days. It was hard to film in, it was hard to work in, and I'll be totally honest, 
if I weren't stuck with deadlines, I would have postponed it. If you can postpone, then postpone because it does risk a good finish. We do have a couple of little drip marks in the finished pad. I've got a couple of choices there. I can fix them if I want to, but to be honest, once the floor goes down, I don't think it's gonna be a big issue. The main thing is we've got a six meter by four meter solid foundation to build the workshop on. So a bit of feedback from the last episode, a lot of you guys wanted to know what something like this cost. So from the ground up, the mini dumber, 35 quid a day. The MOT and blind and sand cost me 350 quid. The rebar or mesh and spacers cost me 100 quid. The DPM was, I think it was about 40 quid. And the concrete itself, mixed on site, was 650 quid. So without a calculator, someone will probably correct me, but it's about 11, 1200 quid to put this concrete slab down to build a workshop on. Of course, that'll vary dependent on the size. So in the next episode of the workshop build here, I'm gonna construct the walls. I'll take you guys along on that journey with me. Again, let me know of any feedback you've got and how I can make this little mini series any better. And hopefully you've enjoyed it. If you have, hit one of these videos because you're bound to like them as well. And I'll see you guys in the next one.